we came here because we believed in this country. And why is this country? What is it that makes this country the greatest country in human history? It's not an accident. It's not just a fluke. Then the certain principles on which this country was founded that make it such a great and, and maybe the key principle here is this idea of individual rights. And the idea of individual rights is not what we're hearing today. You know, we have a right to health care, right to food, and a right to lodging, and a right to all these things that other people have to produce for you. That's called slavery. That's not called rights. The idea of rights is the idea of freedom, the idea of liberty, the idea that each one of us has an inalienable right to live our life the way we choose to live it. As long as we don't violate the rights of others, as long as we don't towards other people, as long as we don't use physical force on other people, we're supposed to be left alone. Left alone to pursue our lives, to pursue our happiness. That's what made this country great. To the extent that this country is still great is to the extent that we still protect those freedoms, those liberties. And that's really what Abbasrug book celebrates. Abbasrug celebrates that freedom, that liberty, that idea of individual rights. It warns against the threat of what happens when we walk away from those rights, when we negate them. And most importantly, and I think its real contribution, historically, is that it provides the philosophical foundation, it provides the ideas that underlie the ideas of the founding fathers, the idea of individual rights and freedom and liberty and capitalism. So why is it? Why is it that they're moving away from those principles? Because, you know, we're not free. We're not free to pursue our life any way we want to. We're not free to do the things that we choose to do. We've got it every action that we take, almost every action that we take in life, we've got somebody looking over our shoulder and telling us what we can and cannot do. What is, from their perspective, right or wrong. I mean, today, you need a license to cut people's hair. You need to be licensed by some bureaucrat to do almost any action. Every, you know, most business transactions are regulated by government in some form or another. But even many of our individual, you know, there's even threats to free speech these days, one of our most basic rights. I mean, our rights have been challenged at every level. You know, what happened? Why are we where we are today? Versus kind of the, the image that I have of America, and I think that many had of America, and that America was, maybe quite a long time ago, but was, decades and decades. Why have we, over the last hundred years, moved systematically away from that vision of liberty, of individual rights, of capitalism? Because it used to be that this country had a government that did very little. You know, if you look at GDP, uh, if you look at GDP, which is the, the, the uh, government spending is related to GDP. If you look at that number, which is a good measure, inflation control, and everything. The U.S. federal government was 10% its size today. 10% 100 years ago than it is. So you could shrink the government by 90% and you get the government we had 100 years ago in America. It was doing pretty well back then. Growing at the fastest rate in human history. People were exploring the West. People were inventing electricity. Imagine today you try to invent electricity. I mean, that's a risky proposition, right? You could get shocked. I mean, there's a, you'd have to dig up the cities in order to lay, you know, this is, you know, you imagine the number of pooms. Edison would have to get just to run his experiment in his lab if he was doing it today. The Wright brothers, right, not far from here, you know, flew their first flight. You know, just ask the guys who are trying to get into space. Not a bigger proposition than what the Wright brothers try to do. How much regulation and bureaucracy they have to deal with today to do the equivalent of what the Wright brothers did back then. Well, the airline industry just generally, you can imagine how many crashes they were originally, right? The risk people were willing to take, because this, this was a, if you had some new industry where, where those kind of crashes were happening, they would be killed right off the bat. So we live at a time where, you know, we're being constrained, and, and I don't even, I'm not even talking about just this administration. This administration may be taking it to the next level, but the 
this has been a trend where government has grown and grown and it's interference in our daily lives as it continues to grow and grow. And the question is why? And, and part of the reason people tell me, I mean, I, had, I was getting a talk in San Francisco and somebody said, wait a minute, you're for free markets? How can you be for free markets? Haven't we just experienced the failure of free markets? Didn't the markets just fail? Isn't that proof that capitalism doesn't work, right? If it was the headlines of all the papers, capitalism failed. And I looked at them and I say, capitalism? Free markets? What planet are you from? Right? I mean, think about what, what just happened. And, and, and I, I, I highly recommend that John Allison has a video on our website and I think on other sites where you, can, where you can get an hour and a half uh, you know, very, very detailed description of exactly what happened in the financial crisis. But just, just a quick overview, right? Just, just in the sense of the free markets fail. This is a good answer to give to people that you hear. The markets that seem to fail were housing and banking. Now, housing is a free market, right? The government has no involvement in the housing business. It doesn't zone. It doesn't tell you. There's no, there's no regulations in California. You can't get houses in like third or two thirds of the land in California, right? That constrains the ability to supply. The mortgage business, that was a completely free market. There was no Fannie, there was no Freddie. You know, banks are not, you know, then look at look at look at the banking industry. I mean, there is no industry in the United States more regulated, more controlled, with more government intervention in every single aspect of the industry in the banking. There is none. So something failed, no question about that. But free markets? There were no free markets three years ago that suddenly failed. There were heavily regulated markets in housing and mortgages and banking. That failed. And the question is, what caused that failure? And surprise, surprise, if you look at it, it's the regulations that failed. It's the regulations that provided the perverse incentives. It's the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates below the rate of inflation for two and a half years. Now let me tell you, a principle in economics, the Fed keeps an interest rate below inflation for a lengthy period of time, something bad is going to happen. It just doesn't make any sense. It's basically paying you to borrow money. And what do, what do we do when people pay us to borrow money? We borrow money. We borrow a lot of it if they really pay us to borrow a lot of money. And everybody borrowed money. I borrowed money. You all borrowed money. We did it on our credit cards. We did it on mortgages. We did it on our homes. Businesses borrowed money. You know, the government borrowed money. Everybody borrowed money like crazy. Was, how can you resist it? It's at 1%. And, uh, and inflation is at 3 There's an arbitrage. So surprise, surprise. We borrowed too much money and we're paying the price right now. Because all this crisis is really, there's a problem of over leverage. We all borrowed too much money and we have to pay it back. And some of us can't. It's called foreclosure. That's, that's the crisis. So this is a failure, absolutely. This is a massive failure of government intervention in the economy. This is a massive failure of the mixed economy. But what's interesting, what's really interesting here, is that you don't hear that story. Everybody tells a story about capitalism failed, and there are a few muted voices here and there that might say, no, no, it wasn't that. But you don't really hear a, a loud voices out there advocating, no, this is a capitalism that failed, it's government policies that fail. You don't get the passion from the defenders of capitalism that, you know, for really free markets and, and you know, where we should be heading. To the extent that they're there, they're, they're kind of muted, they're kind of soft-spoken, and, you know, they're compromising like our politicians, they don't want to... You know, and I'm just going asking myself, why is it? Why is it that the defenders of capitalism so muted. And why is it that there aren't more? Right? We live in this wonderful country where you think people would appreciate what freedom and capitalism and free, truly free markets 